Uh, he's from Spot, uh, Spot X. Spot, Spot X. Uh, he's a front end engineer, and he's going to be talking a little bit about React. And he uh, enjoys answering questions, so be sure to answer ask a lot of hard questions. <laughs> so he told me to say that, so I'm not on the spot here. So. I told you to say a variation yeah, of that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go around to talk. Yeah, these are both mine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm Tom. I am a front end engineer at SpotX. My boss uh, did a surprise visit to watch me do this presentation. So, thank you for that, Cody. Um, and, yeah, so when I'm not programming, I'm climbing, reading, uh, mountain biking, kind of doing Colorado things. If it's stereotypical, I probably do it. Uh, so, I wanted to start off with like, uh, you know, presenting is terrifying. Uh, thankfully, there are not 60 people here because that was really scaring the hell out of me. Um, <laughs> but you guys kind of do this thing where you give me this dead-eyed stare as I talk more and more and more, and you're just <coughs> like not even nodding, just kind of looking at me. And it reminds me of uh, Sorry about the ads. So right now, my parents think they're going to go to the and they to come and see me. The crew was staked in this hallway to make it. shout out to Google and call the sponsor. Yeah, big shout out to SpotX. <laughs> we do a lot of these. Sponsored by whoever. Webmaster Card, yeah. This is your home order. So this is kind of you guys right now. Man. This is your home order. That's what you guys can expect from this presentation. Because, like, when I'm asking, you know, what do I do with this component? How do I export this component? And you guys are just, you know. So my point is, don't be afraid to like shout things out, to haggle me, to whatever. It'll make me feel a lot better. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> let's uh, move on. Um, so what we can expect from this talk. Uh, Let's first talk about what not to expect. This is a very beginner-oriented course, as you guys probably read from the title. Like, we are going to talk about how how to take that traditional index.html, JavaScript, CSS bundle, and transport it into a front-end framework. So, what we're not going to talk about is like, why would we use a functional component over class-based component? Why would we, you know, pay attention to the component lifecycle? Things like that. Uh, if you have questions about it, I'm happy to answer these questions, so hit me up with it later. But uh, in order to kind of get this talk going, we're just going to try to get something like up and running. And ideally, you guys will like kind of make your own site. And as these problems come up, the ones that I mentioned earlier of like com you know component life cycles, you'll run into the actual problem. You'll actually try to figure it out yourself. And then after a certain amount of banging your head against the wall, you're going to like learn it. You're not going to just like memorize kind of obscure facts about React. Uh, so yeah, let's, um, let's make sure I didn't leave anything out. Are there any questions about what we can expect from this talk? Do you have uh, Wi-Fi password? Yeah. Yeah. Is everyone ready? Which yeah, so it's the Pada one is the Wi-Fi. Right. And then, uh, welcome to code. It's all one word, all lowercase. Thank you. Yep. And how many of us are doing uh, like an actual code along? Uh, OK, about half of you. Um, so the thing is, like, as you can expect, uh, I'm going to try to go through a lot. I'm going to be going very fast. Uh, again, don't hesitate to speak up and ask questions, or if something doesn't make sense, you know, whatever. Uh, so, um, would everyone, is everyone signed in? Is anyone not signed in? Raise your hand if you're not. Signed in to what? Oh, Yeah, you're not signed in? Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll give you, well, I can actually talk about this now. So, um, 
All right, we're going to do a live demo session. I wanted to pay tribute to one of the great American actors. Anyone want to guess who the great American actor is? Don't give it away. What's the question? Who is the greatest American actor, Johnny alive or dead? Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> Denzel Washington. That's, that's, I really wish I had made a set about Denzel Washington. It's going to be embarrassing. Any other questions or guesses? <laughs> I don't know who that is, uh, but obviously it's Paul Walker. Um, <laughs> he was in a lot of Fast and Furious movies, as well as Meet the Deedles. So uh, yeah, what we're going to do is try to kind of live code this out. Um, and we're not going to get all the way through all this. We're going to probably get to like here, this welcome, and then kind of here, this part we're looking at right now. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's, and, and so ultimately, like, at the end of this talk, I'm hoping that you'll get to a point where you have something that we did at the end of this, which is, like, these two kind of sections here, and then you can hopefully look at kind of my source code for this site, and then try to link the two, because I think that that in itself would be really valuable. You'll be able to say, like, you know, what, what more do I need to do to get to, like, these awesome movies up on the site? Uh, yeah. So I think we're all going to get started. Uh, if anyone's not on the Wi-Fi, are we all good there? Cool. All right, so first step we're going to do, uh, we are going to create a React app. Um, OK. Can everyone see this fine in the back? OK. Good? More? Good? Yeah. Okay. So yep, uh, this is pretty standard. So you go to the React website, they actually provide you with this command that then boots up in a React application. Um, so now we're just going to name it. So we'll name it like uh, Paul's site. Um, so kick that off. Um, once you guys are done doing that, it's going to kind of take a couple minutes. Now what we do is uh, we go to HTML5 up. Dot net. <clears throat> cool. So this kind of addresses the issue of a lot of you maybe trying to make a website. You're like, I don't actually want to write all of the CSS myself because that will take forever. It will look terrible is kind of where I was. So I just went and started poking around here. These are all free to use. Um, yeah, and so... For our purposes, we're going to use this thing called mini porks. It's simple, and I can kind of get it up and running fast and start making my own. Um, there are things to look for, things to uh, watch out for. Uh, is the site like too simple? Is it too complicated? This is a great example of something I would never use. Like this is the website. Um, if this is your personal website, I don't know. It's a little odd. Um, so I ended up using, for my personal site here, um, this one is called Read Only. Yeah, so this is the one that I kind of started off with and I made it my own by, this is no longer, mine is not a single page application like this. Like, you actually render different components depending on where you're going. It's got a whole React router. Um, yeah, kind of. You want to hit that sweet spot of like not too complicated, not too simple. Um, but yeah, so this one though for the demonstration, we're gonna go pretty simple. We're gonna go to this mini port. Um, so this kind of stuff we want. We're gonna download it. Extract it. Cool. It's in our downloads. That looks good. All right. Is anyone, do they have any questions so far? Um, first thing we want to do is make sure that our React application looks, or just launch fine. Uh, second. So is everyone here so far? Is anyone 
behind Rich show hands. What's that? I said I don't think mine's there in my way. Let's take a look here. 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 Looks like it's just stalled out. Um, Are you starting to Yeah. If not, I can just watch as well. Yeah. Uh, I obviously will not be able to solve all technical problems on the spot, but uh, yeah. Um, so is the live stream recorded? I mean, when we get home. Yeah. So that's the thing is like if you do fall behind, don't panic. You can come back later and kind of look at any step you may have missed. Um, so yeah. All right. We have an application. We have a traditional HTML five page that we're now going to kind of mix together. Um, all right. So, first thing, um, we're going to take the assets and the images from the HTML5 up site. Those are things like the styling, the images, uh, the jQuery even, which we're not quite going to use. But we want to just kind of incorporate that all into our site, and then we can start like, making it our own. So um, wherever you have your HTML5 site uh, downloaded, We're going to copy that into the public directory of our application site, um, of our React application. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes, no? Is this your homework, Larry? <laughs> OK, I'm going to take that as a yes. So here we're moving the assets. And now we're going to move the images. OK, now what we do. We're actually going to go through and start gutting out this site. So here's our React application. I just opened that up. Um, that looks pretty small. Is this good for everyone? Yeah? No? OK. All right, first thing we're going to do is strip out all this header. Um, and then we're going to go into our index HTML. We're going to kind of take out all of this stuff. We don't really need any of it. So we're going to take out the head. And we're going to take out this warning, some comments. OK. Cool. So what we're also going to do is open up the HTML5 site. OK, so this is kind of our whole website that we're trying to actually incorporate. Let's take the script tags, put them in the index file. All right. And then the rest of it, well, we're also going to take the header, put that in the next file. Okay, so kind of like a very basic index.html file. All right, lastly, we're going to take all the content and put it in the app file. OK, two gotchas here. Uh, these comments on the HTML will now break because they're now in a JavaScript file. So can't have those. Um, OK. This is making me very nervous right here. Uh, you got a 185. Yeah. OK, so I need a corresponding body tag. Let's put that in there. All right, 
this is the point where hopefully it will look okay. Uh. Okay. So, all right. At this point, we technically have a React application. It's not like a real one because we're not even using any components, but we are rendering JSX on our application. So uh, it looks pretty good. I actually left this error in here intentionally because it's going to teach us an important skill for later on, which is uh, we want to, it, it's going to be very valuable for you to look at this application here and compare the two. You'll say, okay, this is what it looks like here. This is where I took it from. Why does it look like here? And what you're going to do is inspect it. Um, we kind of don't have the time to really debug it right now. But actually, you guys started out to me what the actual problem was. Does anyone know like, where we kind of went wrong, why our footer looks kind of messed up like that? I saw a closing tag after a closing body tag. OK, that's kind of on the right track. Right before that, what were we seeing that was kind of off? That's OK. So we here, if we look kind of closely, we'll see, OK, we have a GitHub icon. We have a Dribbble, Facebook, Twitter. I don't know what any of those are. But uh, OK, we have those here. Now let's go over to this site. OK, we have Twitter, Google+, Facebook. Um, so it looks like maybe these were just kind of extra ones provided for us that we don't actually need yet. But they're there in case we want to incorporate our own. So let's comment those out. We'll look at our local. OK, cool. Back on track. And then uh, there's actually another thing that I forgot that you better do it now or it's going to come back to bite you in the ass later. Class, does anyone know what's wrong with this? Exactly. OK. Class needs to go to class name. We're going to replace all. Does anyone know what's wrong with what I just did? Yeah. OK. Cool. So it should be the same. Yep, still looks good. OK. Like I said, we, this is technically a React application. What do we think we might want to do next? If we think about it, like, yes, we, this is technically JSX, but like, does anyone know in an app, a React application, like, what is this app.js file supposed to look like when it's all said and done? Just the very minimal with components being uh, passed back into it. Exactly. Like, this is supposed to render components, this app.js file. It's supposed to pull components from elsewhere and render them. It's not supposed to have all the components within it. It's just supposed to be pulling them. It's like a, it's almost like a router, but not exactly. Like it's gonna take them from elsewhere, render them. That's it. So, with that in mind, do we know what we want to do now? Is maybe create components. Um, so, for our purposes, uh, for the sake of time, how much time do I have left? Uh, yeah. for three hours. Keep talking. Three hours. Perfect. <laughs> um, Careful what you wish for. <laughs> so I think what we'll do, for the sake of time, we'll take this high on Jane Doe, we'll take this and make these into two components, and we'll kind of just leave these two alone. But hopefully you'll get the idea from the first two, how do I keep making components? And also another thing to keep out, uh, look for is this uh, navbar at the top. Um, if you want to do what I did for my site, that could actually become a React router, and you can like kind of change the whole layout of this application. But we don't have time for that. We're just going to make like two components, talk about different ways of rendering them, and then hopefully you'll get an idea of like, OK, this is why you use a front end framework to make things faster and easier. So we have like 40 minutes. 40 minutes, OK. 40 minutes to three hours. Um, let's go ahead and make uh, components. All right, we'll call our first component the one that you see when you first hit the website, welcome. <clears throat> Seems like a good one. All right. 
So this index.js, uh, you actually don't need this file. Like you can kind of write in a certain way that the components go directly into the app.js file. This is kind of nice. It just acts as like a little bit of a router where uh, you'll see it's like a syntactic or <laughs> syntactic difference. Does anyone know the actual word? <laughs> it's a difference of syntax. So we'll say. Uh, Okay, pretty simple, it's just importing and exporting. All right. Now, this is the really nice thing about HTML5 up. It's kind of split up for you. We took out those comments, but let's just pretend they're still there. If we look at this article and we see this ID, it has an ID of top. All right, the next one has an ID of work. Next one, portfolio, uh, contact. And if we actually look at this site here, right? We have like top, work, portfolio, contact. So this is kind of the hope, hopefully at the point where you're seeing like, all right, these are like, this was a lot more powerful for me than a to-do list because I'm seeing, okay, this is a component, this is a component, this is a component, like this is how we're splitting up a website um, and how we can hopefully get them to interact with each other. So let's go ahead and take out, here's the article idea of top, so that's a component. In our case, we're not calling it top, we're calling it welcome. Uh, you can call it top if you'd like to. So, all right. Comment that out for right now. Some of you might be a little bit panicked right now, it's okay. This is very boilerplate. You will write this every time you write a component. So I promise you, it's not that I necessarily like, uh, learned this by heart the first time and then I was able to do it. I just did it over and over again. So uh, this is what it looks like. Does everyone, does anyone lost? Does anyone have questions? Does this look okay to anyone? Yeah, so uh, what you're doing is also a good example. So uh, if I put my export default at the bottom like this, it's saying, you're saying more explicitly, uh, I have multiple components right here, but I want to export this one by default. In this case, we're only gonna be exporting one component. So it's like, just go ahead and export this one. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's okay. it more direct versus... Yeah, yeah, it's just a bit simpler. Um, Again, this is kind of one of those like total preference, however you want to do it. Yeah, good question. I, I've just never seen that before. Yeah, yeah, that was a good question. So, all right, we're all set up at this point, so let's go ahead and this is what we're gonna return. All right, before I save this, well, actually I can save it now because it still won't show up. All right, cool. So, we, you can all see we're missing this right now, right? Okay, so we have one last step. We have the component in place. Let's go ahead and import it. Uh, so we do here, import welcome. Because that index.js, I, I don't have to be so explicit, I can actually just leave it. It's kind of the nice thing about this index.js is like, I'm gonna now render all these components as one object. Okay, so we've imported it, but we still have not rendered it. Cool, so there it is again. Okay, kind of back where we started. Uh, 
and let's just do the other one real quick, less talking. Uh, we're gonna do work. I meant to save that boilerplate I was talking about earlier, but I didn't, so I'm just gonna do it real fast. This is our work component. We're gonna go a little bit different order here. Uh, we'll just go ahead and bring in work. Import work. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and take that component out. So we have our article ID work here. Here's the corresponding article. So it's all there. And are we kind of getting an idea right now of like how this already is starting to look a little bit better? Like before we had this big ugly index.html file, if you wanted to change anything, you probably had to make a lot of different changes. Whereas now it's more modular. We can look at one component, we can look at another component, and like they're not gonna actually touch each other, hopefully. Like they're just totally separate. Does that make sense, everyone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does anyone verbally say yes? Yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Quick question. Yeah. When you're importing statements, um, you import, you, you leave off the .js, is that just kind of assume because it looks like a directory? To yeah, me? so if I want to be explicit about it, I can say uh, .js. Uh, I forget what kind of like React magic it is, but if it ends in .js and I believe .jsx, it will already know. Like, it will assume it if you don't write it. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so, hopefully you guys have an idea uh, after your very rowdy, yeah, for sure, we understand kind of thing, um, why we're kind of doing this, like what we're gaining. Now the idea is like, okay, we have this rendered list here, and if we actually look at this component, so our work component, let's look at it. So, okay. It's a header, here's all the stuff I do, and it's got a bunch of filler for us. All right, now it's got a row, okay, I see that, it's a row. All right, now every time we're gonna programmatically render this div, and does anyone notice anything about these three divs? Same. Exactly, they're the exact same. We don't need to actually, like, this to me is when React started to click. I was like, oh, okay. We don't need to like rewrite the same div with the same thing every time. Like that's that's kind of dumb, right? So <clears throat> this is the part where you'll break out the Google and say uh, rendering uh, lists or arrays React lists and keys. Okay, that looks good. And uh, let me give a quick shout out to React. Uh, Facebook is not the most popular company in the US right now for very good reason. Uh, turns out you sell us out to the Russian government, everyone gets really upset. Um, but React is great. And one of the reasons is their documentation is, I mean, amazing. Um, <laughs> at that wonderful place at work, uh, we use Angular. And a lot of you may struggle a little bit, not that I ever have because I'm very productive and very uh, awesome worker. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Angular documentation is not quite as good. Uh, not that I don't love it in my job. Um, so, uh, all right. Uh, quite the digression, but okay. 
Does anyone see that fine? Sorry, I, keep, I know I keep asking. <laughs> sure. So let's take a look. This is. Okay, this is actually kind of what I was looking for. So here we have a uh, number. Let's go, let's go further. Okay, yeah. So we have an array here. And here what we're doing is we're doing dot map. I don't know how many of you are familiar with these higher order functions in JavaScript, but we're gonna take this array, uh, numbers, we're gonna map it and we're gonna create a new array. And in that new array, all it's doing is just programmatically telling us, here's a list item, here's a list item. Does that look kind of familiar to what we're doing right now to anyone? Right, like we're just taking these divs, we're going one on top of the other and they're all exactly the same. So let's, this is a little bit of a jump right now that we're gonna make for the sake of time, but let's go ahead and kind of see if we can just take a stab at it. All right, so we're gonna render these divs programmatically. And what it's, the only difference is gonna be that we have different content. But what that's gonna look like, if we go off of our example, is an array. It's like, okay, that's an array. And within this array, we're gonna render, let's see, this is font awesome for those of you who aren't aware, but those are the actual icons. Um, so let's, maybe it'll make more sense if we look here. Uh, these divs are the same, except they all have their own icon, they have their own title, and they have their own content. Is that, everyone's kind of with me? <laughs> okay. So, that's fine. Let's do, let's make an object and we'll say it has an icon. Icon over here. It has a title. Title will go here. And then it has content. Content will go here. Okay. So for this case, we're going to take our icon. Take our title. And we're going to take content. Cool. All right. So let's see if I can split this up in like a decent way. I don't know what a split screen is going to look like here. to help me out so okay we have an array with one item in it right now let's just go ahead let's make another one really quick on the fly so we said icon title and content Once more, we're gonna do the same trick here. Take the icon. Take the title. Oh, I see, so we're pretty much gonna do the map function, just keep rendering. Ex thank you so the, much, yeah. The object, right? uh, Perfect, right. so let's go ahead, and I kinda of wanna do that right now. Um, so what can we do with this div? Keep in mind, we have the exact same div above it. It's kind of a trick question. Does anyone know we can do this div? Perfect, yep, that's exactly it. Okay, so let's take this array and let's try to code out exactly what they have in our example and see uh, if we can kind of get the exact same result. So I think I, let's save it and see what it looks like. <laughs> Great. Uh, It looks, I've gotten this error before, and I almost think that it's like the uh, IDE being a little uh, overzealous. Um, it might be the white background. 
Yeah. <laughs> you Whatever. Cut all the <laughs> What's that? Like you cut all the animal weight I do, yeah. Why am I not supposed to do that, by the way? I don't know. I know. <laughs> I, I am the only person in the world that does it. But. No, there's others. <laughs> yeah. The army actually determined that white is uh, like very tiring in your eyes. I don't know if that That's, <laughs> I mean, I believe it. I also think that we're like human beings that are meant to be outside and like enjoying ourselves and we're just, you know. <laughs> but. It's also me. I have to enjoy it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right. See, like you can throw shade at me. That's fine. I, I appreciate that as long as you guys are <laughs> participating. All right. I think I was born to be like an elementary school teacher or something, you know? I mean, you're not using them, so it's all Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could if I wanted. Yeah. Um, this is a bit of a problem. I think I'm going to ignore it for right now because I actually do think it's the. Uh, the IDE is kind of... If you draft that array and curly is it, you might take care of it. It doesn't know what to do with that array. Yeah. Oh, right, thank you. Yes, exactly, exactly. So I need to actually... One thing we can just do is... Uh, here. Yeah, we're not actually using that yet. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Kind of what we'd expect. I put a blank div in there now, and then we have the last div that I didn't feel like actually creating. So let's do that right now. Um, OK. I, I apologize for this is being so ugly. Uh, I don't apologize for the white background. I think it looks great. Um, OK, so who wants to kind of start me off here? Anyone? So are you going to create a new component for that, or are you going to do it in this one? We're going to do it in this one. I'm going to render it. Uh, I'm going to start following the example on my left, mm -hmm. my left, uh, right now. So I have an array, and I want to program programmatically render a system of divs using that array. So you might say let display content equal. Okay. You've got to assign a variable to name your array. Yep. Um, Okay, so let's uh, slow down a little bit. Actually, I like that naming scheme better. We'll do that up here. So let display content equal. Uh, you got to get rid of that. Extra bracket up there. Line five. Yeah. Line Thank five. you. Okay. All right. So we have our array defined. Now, what do we want to do with it? Display content on map. Uh, didn't catch everything you said, so I'm gonna call it whatever I want. Uh, whatever I want. Uh, equal. Okay. I'll call it element because we're not going to use numbers. We don't have any actual numbers here. Okay. And then touch your div and call your object uh, keys. Okay. So we all agree this is the div we're trying to render. Okay. So we have the div. Now let's. Uh, <laughs> this is a funny thing. Um, you don't quite get this in Vim. You can actually let a lot of your IDE do the work for you right here. So this is kind of the first spot, right, that we want to render something a little bit different. Um, do that right? Yeah. OK. All right, who knows what this is going to be called? Display content first object. Sorry, could you speak up? So you're referring to the display content, right? So you do the display content. Display content, yep. So Except. Element. Element. Oh, sorry. Element, sorry, yep. Element. No, nope, that was a good guess. Element dot. Icon. Icon. There it is. Okay. Oh, come on now. I might have a problem with my. Uh, 
how I'm actually rendering it. Let's take a look. I think you, I think you can get rid of the extra curly brace set. You actually you need yeah. that. Yeah. Do we? Part of the right there. Let's take a look. You need to um out. Okay. <laughs> you need to return it. We're yep, we're getting to that. Let's keep going with this. Um you need a curly brace after the fat error. Mm. Uh, no, actually, because uh, when you return things in line like that, you're actually going to leave the curly brace off. Okay. It's it's like a very annoying, to me, annoying part of JSX that I'm sure a lot of nerds will tell you, like, no, actually, it makes perfect sense. But uh, there's an implicit return there. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, I, so. I like the return there because Python developers are so very explicit. <laughs> yeah. All right, so again, we're doing element dot what? <laughs> Somebody, I think I heard you murmur it. Title? Okay. And then here we're going to do what? Content. Cool. Let's see how it looks. Oh, and then we won't see it yet, will we? I swear my format is not that much of a mess, but kind of a time crunch. So let's go ahead and render it. Do we know what's going to go here? Whatever I want. Thank you. Cool. There we are. So, thank you. Yeah. You could have made that a pause louder, but I still appreciate it. <laughs> so, uh, that'll hopefully get you guys thinking like, all right, whenever you want to add new content and you're making kind of like, let's go back to my site. So uh, I said things like, I put out, you know, talks that I enjoy, functional JS, event loop, blah, blah, blah. Like anytime I want to add to this list now, I just make a new object at the end of that array of whatever I want. And it's doing all of the legwork for me. I don't have to do anything anymore. I just need to include certain elements. Um, so that's that's pretty good. Let's. Uh, I'm going to take something. So to make it a little more in honor of Paul Walker, uh, we'll take. I think this is the one I want. Mm, no, it's not. There we go. Okay. Cool. So this uh, this array, you guys can find it. Uh, I think. I'm not sure I actually included the GitHub URL, but I'll include it at the end. Um, this is a little bit more you know, personalized. So I said, like, uh, font awesome film. I'm changing around the icons a little bit. We have star and then a thumbs up. Uh, I think I put in some nonsense description. But this is just so you guys can see what it looks like. So let's just go ahead and uh, Take out that, and so instead of whatever I want, or no, instead of display content, put it here. I'm actually gonna rename this display content. Uh, some problems. Okay, so I did a little bit of changing around. Um, Sorry, there's one more thing I want to get to, and I'm trying to decide if it's worth it to actually like work through this right now. Uh, yeah, let's do it. We can say, okay, we have element.icon. Instead of title, we have a uh, heading, and then we have description instead of content. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Um, we still have that last div that I left that I'll just take away now. Mm -hmm. Must I shouldn't do that. Oh, went one div too far. Okay, great. So uh, I want to get to one last thing. If we think we're gonna have just enough time. All right. So uh, here we have Paul Walker telling us from the grave. Make sure to spread the word on how awesome I am. Tell your friends, colleagues, and family. If they need any convincing, please visit this. And we're supposed to have there is link. Okay. It's just gonna be a hyperlink. You click on it, it takes you to one of his many awesome works. 
who knows, does anyone have any ideas of like how we could, what we first need to look at to get this link here on this last div, but it's not gonna be on the other two. Does anyone know how? Maybe another argument in that uh, object? Yes, okay. That's exactly it. How, what are we gonna do now with that extra key value pair on that object that is not on the other two? How are we gonna render that one but not render it on the other two? Null, have the other two as null or it's logic in that way? Yes. If null, blah, blah, blah. Exactly, so do you know what we call that like very officially? Conditionally rendering, okay, great. So let's, let's try to do it really fast. Okay, conditional rendering React. All right, I'm gonna skip down. If you were doing this on your own, you would have to read through all of this, but I've already done this obviously, and I know I want to do an inline. So what I'm gonna do is there's, there's that paragraph content, on the end I wanna tack on a link. So, okay. Here we have this, which kinda of looks exactly like what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have this key value pair, and then if it's present, if it's truthy, I'm going to tack on a hyperlink. So let's do that right now, okay. So. Yeah, I'll do it that way, okay. All right, so we can see it here, right? This is the key that neither of the two objects have. So we'll say element.link and and What's this link gonna be, anyone? Hint? Well, hint, it's right here. How are we gonna reference it? Element dot link. Perfect, thank you. Uh, okay, I don't think I fat fingered that. Perfect, there it is. Um, we can listen to the first 30 seconds. That's all you need to hear. Uh, hey, uh, what a council, my name is Chad Kroger. First, I just want to say I'm truly honored to be here. Uh, to be in a city where you can have a surf session and then go to a city council meeting within the span of an hour, I think that just shows that the American dream is still very much alive. So thank you. Amen. All right, so this serious stuff. I, uh, I stand before you here today in the midst of gnarly times. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot that was coming up next. Okay, uh, that's a good uh, jumping off point for us. Um, I think what I, we still need to do, we need to deploy the website and we, I'm gonna talk about kind of where to go after that. So <laughs> the deploying is far and away my favorite part of this because uh, who, is everyone here familiar with Heroku? Is anyone not? Raise your hand if you're not. It's okay if you're not. Every single one of you is uh, familiar with Roku like that. Uh, so, um, all right. So, because you guys are all the experts, we'll do a Heroku create. Oh, and let me show you about one of the greatest add-ons ever. If you mistype something, oh no, it's not there anymore. Anyway. <laughs> Wow, that's fast. Okay. Um, okay. Now we're just going to push it up to our new Heroku application that I just made with uh, Heroku Create. I feel like I'm forgetting a step. So we committed it. Should be okay. I think we're okay so far. Cool. 
Okay, so at the end of this step, we will now have a fully fledged React application, uh, <laughs> or we won't. Um, oh, okay, yeah, I've seen this before. Sometimes that yarn lock file, I don't know what security measures undertaking, but uh, it does get outdated in between when you create the application, when you push it, weirdly enough. Um, so you will have to remove it, repush it, and then recommit it. Uh, here we go. Okay, so while that's deploying, um, things that you can kind of look out for now. One thing, one very glaring omission I've made is uh, state and props. Um, state is basically like how a component knows if it's open or closed, if it's collapsed or maximized, kind of things like that. So let's look at one good example. Um, okay. So for my navbar, I made a collapsible, collapsible element, and its state is saying, am I fully collapsed? Yes. OK, it perceives a click. It changes its state. So uh, another one I've made are, um, I made modal images. So, um, so you. It's now saying, am I open or am I closed? That's like a, a state that you're actually going to update and change depending on the user interaction. Um, so that's a great place to take it next is you want to start to think like, OK, I've made the very basics. I've separated out my components. I'm rendering them using JSON. How can I now like incorporate more complex things like I talked about at the beginning of this talk, component lifecycle, uh, states, you might want to use Redux. That's going to be my, my next step. Uh, I kind of just haven't gotten around to it, but I'm going to make, like, in between tick lists and resume, I'm going to make a calculator. You can click on the calculator, and then you can just do a calculator because that incorporates Redux. So now I know Redux. Um, yep, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Looks like our Heroku app uh, or deployed fine this time. To save me the embarrassment, the first time you run Heroku open, because you're all familiar with it already, um, if it's a free application, it falls asleep every 30 minutes of you know no use. So it actually it's not awake yet, or it is. Still managed to make it look bad. <laughs> so yeah, this is it. This is our Heroku application. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's what I got. Um, Let's maybe just, no, that's actually good. You know, I could change something like, uh... I don't even want to right now. So, okay, let's just, I guess you guys have had to take it on faith so far that <laughs> what I'm doing is actually saying what it's doing aside from like the occasional erroring out. Um, but like, yeah. So is there a web server? Like, I, I didn't catch that with, when you push the Roku, like, this is all static, right? Uh, so, if I'm understanding your question correctly, like, uh, when I make, when I use that Create React application, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's kind of just a lot of scaffolding, so like your Webpack config file and Babel, those are all pre-baked, um, if that's kind of what you're asking. Uh, you can go to the website right now. Yeah, yeah, so that, that Heroku application is an actual, like, URL. Well, I'm just, well, I'm wondering what's standing up the HTML and CSS. Like, is there a web server? Yeah, the Heroku. Heroku basically built a web server. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I can so send you this URL, and it's an actual website. It's like in the next, where it's just, like, looking for the static site. Like, where you're static in the next website. So, and I, I guess that's one thing I forgot to include in this talk, is, like, um, <laughs> So, you know, my, my domain name is 
uh, terickson.io. So what you're going to do eventually, uh, I left this off the talk because it's not very interesting. It's actually pretty straightforward. You go to a domain. I went to like googledomains.com, bought a domain name, and then you can actually link the two. So uh, behind the scenes, mine is actually just a React application with this name. And now I just tell Google, anytime you hit this uh, terickson.io, go to this Heroku application. Um, I have the paid distro, so that way it doesn't go sleep, go to sleep. Uh, but that's like, yeah, that's kind of it in terms of like how you guys want to get your own React application up. So, are there any questions or? I noticed you didn't have to run build to serve the files that a browser would understand. Yeah. So. Um, there's kind of a lot to that, but you probably do want to run build. If you notice on, you actually won't even see it. Okay, so because I didn't run build, I'm technically running a development mode of React, which for your own site is honestly fine, but you know, if you're doing like actual corporate development, that's not fine. So like mine, I did use build. Make sure to do it before you deploy, and now I have the production build of React, which is Amazing that through what like five commands or so we now have a fully fledged website. So. So you would just run React build and then push it up. Yarn build. Or, yeah. Yeah. So what it does is it creates a build forward slash site and it's kind of updating all those things. So they're now using like production components as opposed to development. Uh, honestly, like <laughs> that's another thing you'll find that I actually did uh, on this tick list was I did some of my own CSS, like I did the fade in and the fade out for the uh, for the modal images. And to do that, I actually had to run npm run eject, which breaks open that whole React application, and now you have to do it all manually. But the reason I did it this way is because it is a great way to just kind of get up and running, and like, you might never even run that command. But yeah, that, that's what's so cool about this, is like, you're at a good starting point where now, anytime you want to add something, like, it becomes a much more manageable piece of component, code, whatever, that you can kind of go forward with. Got a um, comment sign up in the URL. Is that? Sorry, say it again? Out there? Is that your router? Do you have like a hashtag comment sign up in your URL right now? Yep. Where is um, that coming from? Is it your router? That is the router, yeah. So, uh, that's that would actually be a great next step is a lot of you could take this nav bar here and make a react router so that way uh yeah it's using that as opposed to it's still kind of using that traditional like get element by id and kind of going there so um well that, that's actually a good challenge is like you can see i still have a lot of errors uh react doesn't like href um and I think my site is now down to maybe one warning or one error. Um, or if even that, yeah. So that's that's actually a great way to go about it too, is like take out all the errors, take out all the warnings. It's a pain in the ass, but yeah, you'll learn a lot. When you're mapping through an array like that, when do you have to use a key? Great question. Um, you should always use a key. That's probably a lot of these. Uh, uh, I don't see it off the front, but you should always use a key. I I missed that step. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me honest. Uh, yeah, so you'll want to say something like uh, here. We'll say key equals element. Um, that's actually not even the right component. So. But you should always use it. That way you can reference it whenever you so, want. I've had one where so I had two arrays mapping like that, mm -hmm. and I got an error that I had duplicate keys. What's yeah. the um, right way to deal with that? I just made one like 10 plus and the other. OK, so uh, there, there's a lot of documentation on that. Um, to be totally honest, I don't understand why certain conventions are frowned upon. Because certain ones to me seem really good. So, uh, like here, I would say a great one. If you have two arrays that are in fact different, um, you can say key equals element dot uh, icon. So you're in a map, so you can just create an index. 
Well, so that's this is kind of doing that for me. So this this key, I'm just saying, create element icon, and now you can imagine every one of these divs has its own unique. It's not going to reuse this element icon, right? So you'll never get a duplicate key, assuming you never repeat any of these. So it doesn't have to be a number. It doesn't have to be a, a number. A number? No, no, not at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I also, I kind of like to do it this way sometimes where I'll say like uh, index and then I'll just say like, you know, index. Yeah. But that's the thing is if you're doing multiple arrays, then you are getting duplicates. Okay. So what would it look up like in the documentation, just keys? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I Googled the error. It's like, you know, okay. each element or each key must have its own yeah. Yeah, okay. unique identifier. And I think they suggest using like an uh, actual ID for the document, maybe a key back in the database or something. Yeah. But short of that, if you've got like three or four, like, I think. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, too. If you wanted to, you could create its own property, like key value, and say, like, this is my key, and then reference that. Uh, okay. Generally, it's, it's frowned upon to use a library like UUID to create a unique key if you don't have one already and you show one in the array. Um, <clears throat> if my understanding is correct, what are some of the ways you go about creating a unique key if the one isn't already present in that, in that array? Because I, I had a little trouble trying to come up with ways to do this. Yeah, and UUID. so full disclaimer, <laughs> I'm not qualified to answer, uh, <laughs> but let me do it anyway. Um, no, I, I did something, so like this data visualization, it uses MongoDB, and Mongo gives you a created that hash, and I use that, because I know, I think that's actually like good practice is to use uh, created that, because every element is being created that technically at a different time, getting a different hash, okay. so. Right. You want to be careful with where you put that though, because if your component keeps re-rendering, that's going to keep creating a new date, and then you're not going to reference that ID anymore, and then you're not going to get the benefit of React. Yeah, and so that's another great point, is like, that's kind of the exact step where maybe you run into that issue, and then you say, okay, how can I, uh, like component life cycles, what you'll probably stumble on at that point, which is like, I don't need to keep re-rendering this. It makes you more mindful. Do I need to keep re-rendering something, or can I just render it once until the end of the session? So, all right. Any, any more? Okay. Thanks, guys.